Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I have a skyline or cityscape photo from London. Here's the photo. And what I'm using is various tools, including Mask AI to help me target specific areas and get the look that I want. Super easy, super quick in Neo. Let's get going. I did crop the photo already, but other than that, I have done nothing to it. When I start with a darker photo like this, I like to lift the shadows first just to get a little bit better visibility into the image. Just be careful that if you go very far, you might lose some of the contrast. So I came back with smart contrast, added a little bit to it just so I don't lose that. Also, there's super contrast, which I will be using because I love it. Um, and I will cover that here in a few minutes. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is also adjust the temperature. I'm going to cool that off a bit, maybe something about like that. I think tint is fine, and I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance just to give it a little bit of a pop. But I tend to do that with cityscapes at night simply because city lights give off a very yellow kind of look. I just don't really like it. I like blue better. Personal preference, season to taste, but started there. I'm currently there. I like what I have, but this is where I want to get into some masking capabilities. I'm going to start with Structure AI, and what I want to do is just kind of pop some of those buildings. So I'm going to go about mid-40s, go to Mask AI, and as you probably know, you click on that, it'll start to identify various elements or objects within the photo and create a mask for them automatically, which you can then select to selectively apply that edit. So there we go, it's done calculating. I'm gonna click on architecture and see what it comes up with. And as you can see, it's done a good job of identifying the buildings. Now the edges are not perfect. I'm hopeful that in the future we have like an edge refinement or edge wear brush that we can use to clean those up. But I'm gonna go ahead in with a brush and do a little bit of a cleanup. Mask AI has saved me a lot of time, but it's not perfect every time. In this case, I'm gonna go in and just do some erasing around some of those edges so that I can have a little bit finer mask. Okay, a little bit of refinement there and I've got a better looking mask. I highly recommend you take your time, get it right. Again, Mask AI helps quite a bit. It's not perfect, but again, we're getting there. Now that I've got the mask in place, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that because I will be using that mask again. So copy, and by the way, I've got a 44 here, so Structure AI there and there. Now you can't see it that well, it's kind of dark, so that's where I'm gonna come in, go to develop, and go into masking, I'm gonna paste, so I can use that same mask. And then in adjustments, I'm just gonna lift the exposure a tiny bit. I just wanna slightly brighten up the building, so maybe something about like that, like a 0.25 or so. It's a slight brightening. Don't wanna overdo it, it is nighttime, and since it's a little bit dark, I just wanna brighten it a little bit. So again, there it is before and after. I like having that mask. I'm also gonna add some accent AI to those buildings. So masking and one more time, mask actions and paste. Still got the same mask copied. And in adjustments, I'm gonna come over to accent AI and just drag that a little bit here. As you know, accent AI will really pop a photo on a night shot like this. I mean, I could go a lot higher and I think kind of get away with it. I don't wanna overdo it. I'm gonna go like maybe 35 or something, just try to keep it a little bit tame, but it does give a nice little bit of pop to the photo. So there it is before and after. I think I've got the buildings looking pretty nice. Now what I wanna do is go in and just reduce the structure on the water. I don't really need to reduce it in the sky. There's real no structure to work with there. There's no clouds. It's just kind of foggy and overall haze, but um, I do wanna use Structure AI negative in the water. So I'm gonna come in and do that. And instead of using the mask that I've already copied, I'm just gonna go in and get a linear gradient. It's quick and easy. And for me, drawing a straight line, that's the easiest mask type to use. So just click where you wanna start. And in this case, I want it to apply in the bottom. So I click somewhere and drag up. I'm gonna increase the gradient zone or the feathering here. So something maybe about like that. That just kind of smooths uh, the transition from where it's fully masked down here to where it starts to fade away. So maybe something about like that. And I'm gonna come in with the brush and I'm gonna click erase. I just wanna make sure I'm not adding this negative structure to these boats. So I'm gonna take it slightly out of there. Otherwise, I think the linear gradient is just fine. In other words, I'm preserving detail in those boats. So now that I've got that in place, I've got a nice little mask. I can take the amount anywhere I want. So to the right, of course, would be increasing it. I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna go left. 
And some people have asked me in recent videos, what does Boost do? Well, Boost just accentuates whatever you've done with that uh, top slider. So the amount is negative 100. So if I boost it, I'm gonna get even more. As you see, as I drag this to the right, I get this really long exposure kind of look, which I kind of like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I don't always recommend doing like 100 of anything and then a boost of 100, because that's really over the top. But in this case, I think it looks pretty cool. So with a little bit of a linear gradient and a brush to remove that, I was able to take the water that looked like that and made it look like that. Kind of love that, gotta admit, I'm a fan of long exposure on water. But again, in this case, I didn't use Mask AI simply because I didn't need what was already created for the sky, I just wanted it. For the water, linear gradient was a quicker way to get that done. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna pop over to landscape and I'm gonna give golden hour across the entire photo at about a 40. This just warms up the already warm tones. And you might say, Jim, at the beginning, you took the temperature left because you didn't want those warm tones. I did, I set the scene so that I could get a cooler overall look. This is just allowing me to bring back a little bit of those warm tones that exist, like in the lights and in the building facade over here. It's also picking up some of the warm tones from these lights in the sky. So I think that does a nice counterbalance to the cool overall look of the photo. There it is before, really cool, and now I'm getting a little bit of nice pop. And I did apply this across the entire photo because I also like what it does in the water. Again, season to taste. If you wanted to customize it, you can use the mask you've already created or use one of the other ones that are available on the masking menu. Okay, now that I've got that in place, I am gonna go play a little bit with super contrast. In this case, I went to mid 30s here on the highlights. I went to low 30s on midtones, and I went to high 30s on the shadows. And again, this was all experimentation. And then I came in with balance. And for balance here, I went, you know, like a negative eight or nine. I went a negative uh, high 40s on midtones, and I went negative high 30s on the shadows. So if I show you what that does to the photo, here it is before, a little bit flatter, a little bit darker. And now it's popped that color a little bit more. And it's also, I think, created a nice balanced light across the photo without really losing contrast. So there it is before, a little bit darker, a little bit more muted, and there it is now. If you're not familiar with Super Contrast, I did a recent video that showed how powerful of an impact it can have on an image. Check that out if you want to at the link above. And the last tool is just gonna be a little bit of Mystical. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna apply that at about a 35. I like what Mystical does. It adds a little bit of that romantic lighting. It also adds a little bit of shadow, smooths things out a little bit. You could use Mask AI here to apply it only to the sky and water. If you look at the sky and water before, and after, I like that a lot. If you don't want it, because it does add contrast, adds a little bit of shadow back. If you didn't want that in the buildings, you could use Mask AI to specifically target it just in the sky and the water. I kind of like it across the entire image, so I'm gonna leave it. There it is before, mystical, and there it is after. A little bit of mood, a little bit of romantic lighting, just an overall look with a little bit more shadow in certain places or contrast, and I kind of like that overall. So that's my full edit. Let me show you the before and after. There's before, quite a difference that we've made in this photo. A bit dark, lacking color, kind of boring in certain areas, and now very vibrant, a lot of color. And to be honest, we didn't come in and do a lot of saturation. I did golden hour, I did a fair amount of contrast, which really pops the colors. And of course I made a temperature adjustment, but if you look at the colors overall, they pop quite a bit. There it is before and there it is after. And a lot of that is due to heavy contrast or I should say super contrast, which really pops those colors. A little bit of golden hour, a little bit of temperature, but you don't have to do a lot to get a lot. And that's my full edit, my friends. One more time, I will show you the before and after. There it is before and there it is now. Hope that gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. If there are certain topics in Luminar Neo you want me to cover, leave me a, a comment down below. Thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon. You guys take care of yourselves, and until then, adios.